Hi there, DW Berman. Uh, around the 4th of July, I was going to release a video about making fireworks, but I didn't finish the video. But I did make some recordings, so I figured I would release what I have. So this is the first part where it's just showing how to animate the particles. Okay, so here we are in the layout. I'm just going to come over here to the Items tab and add Dynamic Object. And this is going to be a particle. And the first one I'm going to add is going to be an HV emitter. And uh, we have two types here. We have HV emitter and we have Partagon emitter. And I'm going to use Partagon emitters for the actual uh, sparkling bits. But uh, for now, I'm just going to use this one as the trail parent. And uh, I'll set the emitter type to HV emitter and hit OK. And let me change my generator size to 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Okay, and the particle limit on this um, is going to be quite low. But let me switch to my perspective view just so we can kind of get a wider sense of what's going on. And up, and up. Okay, I'm going to hit play. One nice thing about particles and light wave is you can, at least with the simple scenes, just hit play and go. You don't have to do a play blast like you do in some other applications I'm not going to name. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I want to set my motion on the Y to be, say, 25 meters. And I'm going to be... Sh yeah, this is going to be the main part that shoots particles up in the air. This is the... Most of the time, uh, commercial fireworks displays, they're not shooting rockets off. They're shooting mortars up. So they have little explosives in a tube and that goes off and shoots uh, the package with the fireworks up into the air. So that's what I'm working on now. I'm working on the the actual initial blast where it shoots the uh, the firework up in the air. So uh, that looks like about a good rate, I guess. Um, I'm going to come over here to gravity and turn some gravity on. So just do negative 9.8. And there we see the particles are going up and they're starting to come down, and that's that's okay. I did, I don't mind that. I want that to happen, but I am going to change the lifetime of these particles so that they pretty much die right at the top of the uh, right at the top of the curve. A couple other things I'm going to do is I'm going to add some vibration to it. Not quite that much, and I'm actually uh, not wanting to shoot a whole bunch of them off at the same time. Uh, first, I'm just going to set my particle limit to 1. And there we have it. We have 1 go up and go out. So um, I could actually set the birth rate down to, say, 5 per second and set the particle limit to 5. Actually, birth rate could probably be even lower than that. This is if we wanted to have multiple uh, multiple particles, so kind of like the uh, grand finale of the fireworks display. And, you know, you could, of course, set this however you want, and... It all depends on how many uh, fireworks you want to launch at one time. In my case, I really only want to launch one for now. For one type of uh, firework. And uh, you're going to find that with working with this, uh, you'll have instances where it doesn't actually fire off fireworks. Um, particles, so you might have to come in here and tweak these settings and, until things are working again. But anyway, there's my initial blast. I just have a firework going up. This is the position of the mortar shell that goes up and then disappears at the top. Okay, that is my trail parent. That's what I'm calling it, trail parent. The next thing I want to do is I want to actually add the sparks to the trail, and to do that I'm going to add a whole other emitter. So I'm going to make that a partagon emitter. So I'm going to go over here to the, again to my dynamics, ob, add dynamics option here in the menu, and select particle, and partagon emitter. And this one I'm going to name uh, what's that I call it? Trail sparks. This is going to be the sparks, the actual emitter. Can't save object. Trail sparks. Okay, let me set my content directory to a folder that actually exists now. Desktop, I guess. New folder. 
fireworks create and I'll just hit create directory okay so now let's try that again trail sparks it says it could not save it before and the reason it said it could not save it is because a partagon emitter actually makes an object you need to save because you can actually save the surface settings so uh, let's go in here and I'll save that object making sure I'm on trail sparks down there save current object trail sparks and okay there it's saved and I'm gonna change the color of this one just to make things a little more apparent and easier to follow left click on the uh, the little color swatch there and then change it to white um, alright well, there we go let me move this up just so we can kinda see it a little better and I'm gonna hit play and let's change the generator size of that to point two and I'm going to add some variety to the particle weight and to the particle resistance and the lifetime I want to bump up to 120 give or take 20 make that 200 give or take 20 20 frames on the etc tab set parent motion to zero percent because we don't want it following the parent motion it's not parented to anything right now but it will be soon also set the gravity to negative one uh... about negative point two that's more like what we want this is this is going to be the sparks that don't quite start falling right away because they're on fire and they're still kind of floating up or whatever so I want them to kind of hang in the air a little while, so I just set the gravity to negative 2. Instead of the usual real-world gravity of negative 9.8. So, um, next thing to do is I need to parent this to the trail parent. And let me just set my position on this down to 0 again. Not that it really matters, but I don't think it matters, but just in case. So with my trail sparks uh, still selected, I hit M for motion options, and I set the parent of that to trail parent. And back in the uh, FX emitter options, actually I'm going to close that. I'm just going to have uh, I'm just going to hit P, and that opens my object properties, and I also have my emitter properties in there. So uh, let's see. I need to change the nozzle from sphere to parent emitter. Now let's hit play and see what that does. And there we go. We have a trail of dots flying up. Okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, not terribly interesting. Let me zoom out of my perspective. So now we can see clearly where our firework is going. Um, I'm going to change some things on this, some settings on this emitter. I'm going to, let's see, bump the birth rate up a bit. Change the particle limit to 2000. And I want to change some of the settings on the particle motion. So I'm going to set the vibration to 1. That might be too much. 0.2. That's better. So there we have the initial uh, the initial launch. I'm still thinking there's not enough particles, so 400 particles per second. Yeah, there we go. That's looking better. So, okay, very important step right here. Control S or Command S to save. I'm going to save this as Fireworks. What a fantastic name. There we go. Fireworks. Okay, so now I have the trail going up and I have sparks on the trail so that's pretty nifty and of course we don't know what the sparks look like yet but I'll get to that in a, in a little bit of time so uh, let me hit stop here and go back to the beginning I'm gonna add a new emitter uh, there are a couple ways to add particles you can add part uh, emitters uh, by going to the add menu here and dynamic object or you can uh, make a one by hitting control N and making a null and uh, let's see, this is going to be explosion parent. Explosion.
Tyrant. And then go over to Add Effects and Add Emitter, and there you have an emitter. The deal with this one, though, is you can't make a Partagon emitter this way. This one here, let me get, I'm, I'm going to move it up just so I can kind of see what's going on with it. I want this to be a small emitter as well, so I'll do 0.1 all the way around. I'm going to change the generate by to frame, and I'm going to make it say 25, and I'm going to set the particle limit to 25. And you can't really see what's going on because there's no motion. So let me go over here to um, motion, and I'm going to set the vibration. Let's say 20. This is how big the explosion gets. And uh, you'd think you'd use explosion, but that actually causes problems because I'm going to use the. Uh, I'm going to parent this to the other particle, and with explosion, using explosion instead of vibration, it actually just kind of shoots out the top instead of exploding outwards. So I just set vibration, and that works fine. Um, I'm going to change some of the particle settings as well. Uh, I want this to kind of have some variation on the particle resistance and the particle weight. Um, this isn't as critical as with the sparkle ones. Um, one thing that is kind of important is the parent motion. I want that to be zero. And I want there to be some gravity on this. So let's do a negative. This will be another small gravity set. So say negative two. Let's watch our little explosion here. Yeah, they just kind of slowly start to fall off there at the end. And that is pretty much it. If you want it to be a little smaller of an explosion, which you might, I'll change the, yeah, change the vibration to 50. Um, okay, with that set, I'm going to put it down here. I'm going to set the position back down to zero, and I'm going to parent this to the trail parent. So again, hit the M key for motion options. Oops. It's just editing the position still. M for motion options, and trail parent. Because I do want to change the nozzle type on this. I may have said that about the other one, but uh, I'm on explosion parent and I'm going to change the nozzle type to parent emitter end. So what this does is when the um, when the trail parent dies, the explosion parent explodes. So there we have it. Ping! And we have some nice little sparks fly off the top. Now there's no trail on that yet, so we're going to have to make a trail. Instead of just starting over from scratch, I'm going to actually select my trail sparks. And I'm going to hit Control c to clone the item. And that works on both the Mac and the PC. And that cloned the object, so now I have a trail sparks too. And I'm going to save this as... And I, maybe I should have done it from scratch, we'll see. Um, I've had, ha I have had issues where when I clone something and I change the name when I save it, it actually uh, changes the name for both. So let's see if it does that now. Uh, file, save, current object as tr as explosion sparks. And yep, it did. So let me go back to my first one here and just do a replace with object trail sparks. Okay, and for the fun of it, you notice it changed my scale on me? That's lovely. Uh, for the fun of it, I'm going to change the color of the explosion sparks to red. Because I want the red to firework. I change my grid size back down using the left bracket key. You know what, I think I will change something on my explosion parent. There's something about it I don't like. Um, let's make the birth rate 50 and we'll make the particle limit 50. Let's see if I like that better. I 
think that'll be a little nicer. But I have all, multiple trails coming down here, and I don't want that, so one thing I want to do on my explosion sparks is I want to uh, parent that to the explosion parent. So I'm changing the parent of this object. Now when I hit play, you should see sparks coming off both. Now the sparks ended right there because I have the particle limit set too low. So let me change my particle limit on that. First of all, let me change my birth rate down to say 100 per second. We'll see how that deals, how that looks. And I'm going to change my particle limit to 20,000. See what that looks like. And now that's looking nice and uh, fireworky. I might need to come back to my uh, explosion parent and change my gravity on that because it might be a little too strong. I mean, these are bits of really hot items that uh, may float with the heat that they generate. Um, and when you start getting more complicated uh, calculations, it's uh, best to just hit calculate and let it do its thing. And that way you'll get a more accurate view of what it actually looks like. Okay, our particles are all calculated and they're showing up, so what I'm going to do next is very important if you want your uh, scene to load up exactly the same way each time or if you are rendering on a network. This step is very important. I'm going to come in here, make sure I'm on my explosion sparks and file save motion explosion sparks pfx and that'll automatically save into the dynamics folder if you have a dynamics folder set up and since I hit uh, create directories when I created the content directory it made all of those directories okay so now the same thing with the trail sparks I need to save these as well Now the other ones aren't as critical unless you're using them for another particle thing like hypervoxels or something, which I'm going, I'm thinking about doing for the explosion parent, so I will do that as well. Uh, file, save. Now the trail parent, I don't think I need to because we don't see that ever. So uh, we'll just keep what we have here so there's what we have and I could probably have the gravity up higher on the explosion particles themselves on the explosion sparks but uh, yeah we'll leave that for now um, I'm guessing if you add a wind object to this with a turbulence or something you can probably get more variation and it look, might look more realistic but uh, I want to keep this light so I won't be bothering to do that. And that does it for the first part of this fireworks video. In this video we showed setting up the uh, actual part particle emitters and uh, having them explode out. Uh, next time uh, we'll be showing how to set up the way the particles look. So you get the, the sparkle and the twinkle and all of that. And um, if you're interested in the difference between HV emitters and Partagon emitters, check out last week's video. And also, uh, check out uh, my videos that I have for sale at liberty3d.com. You can see the link in the description. And last of all, uh, subscribe to this channel so you can be notified whenever I post new videos uh, and new tutorials and experiments. So, uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.